So finally, we are starting our series on navigation in ROS2. Welcome guys, this video is all about navigation in ROS2. We're starting the series with this video where we'll talk about the basics of navigation. When I say the basics of navigation, I mean the actual basics of navigation. So if you already know about what localization is, mapping is, navigation in general is, or uh, dead reckoning is, this video is not really for you. Of course, we'll talk a little about transforms in ROS2 in this video. We won't go into the details because that is beyond the scope. But the idea is this video is just a basis for us to start talking about navigation in ROS2. So if you think you're comfortable with all the keywords I mentioned before, you can skip to the next video. Just as a disclosure, in the next video, we will be talking about the difference between navigation stack in ROS1 versus the navigation framework in ROS2. So let's begin with the basic idea of navigation. What exactly is navigation in mobile robotics? Well, I think you already know the answer. Navigation for mobile robotics is a mobile robot navigating or moving from one point to the other. This is very simple, right? But what does navigation actually entail? To understand that, let's forget about the robot for a minute and let's talk about a human. We put that person in a building. The person has to actually move from point A to point B and this is what we tell that person. We say, hey, you have to move from point A to point B in the building and the person is in the building but the person has no idea about what the building looks like, what's point A, what's point B. So what will his questions be? His first question will be, where am I right now in the building? And his second question will be, what does the building look like, right? Because the second question, what does the building look like, will tell him what point A and point B is. We are saying you are in point A and you have to go to point B. So he needs to understand where he is in the building or in the blueprint of the building, or we can say a map of the building and also where he needs to go. So essentially, he wants to know about two things, where he is, which is called localization, and where is point B or any other point for that matter in the building, which is called mapping. So this means the person wants to localize himself and needs a map of the building. Translating that to a robot, that is essentially what a robot needs as well. The robot needs to know where it is in the map and second, what the map actually is. So once you do localization and mapping, the robot can do what you want. The robot can move from point A to point B. So this was a generic idea of what navigation entails. Now let's talk about these two building blocks in navigation, which is localization and mapping. Talking about localization, in ROS2, you need localization to understand where the robot is in the map. If you have a map already, it's great. If you don't, then you will have to do something called SLAM, which is beyond the scope of this video and even this series. So let's say you have the second piece of the puzzle we are talking about, which is mapping already done. So you have the map, but you want the robot to localize itself. So to do that in ROS2, you need to establish this transform chain for the robot, which is map to odometry to base link. Now, what exactly does this mean? In ROS and ROS2, you use something called transform or the transform library to understand where different parts of the robot are at any point in time. If you do not understand much about what transforms are in ROS2 or ROS, I'll share a link in the description below where you can actually understand what these things are. But the idea is transforms is a generic concept which is used to get your transformations. It is not a ROS concept. It is just a generic concept in math where you have transformation matrices so you can convert any position from one reference frame to the other reference frame. And that is the idea of transforms we are building upon. So assuming that you know about transforms already, we need this transform chain in ROS2 and this will be actually taken by the navigation package in ROS2. Now the first part of the chain, which is transform from map to odometry is usually done using something like AMCL or GPS, so any global methods. And the second part, which is your transform from odometry to base link is done using local methods like IMU, odometry, and that is how we establish the entire chain. But well, why do we actually need this entire transformation chain? Because let's say you have odometry on your robot, which means you let's say have wheel encoders on your robot. Why are we not satisfied with an encoder based odometry value from a robot? Because it is prone to drift. Now, this might sound complicated for someone who's looking at it for the first time. So let's simplify this, okay? The idea is, let's say you have a transformation reference point, which is called odometry. So you have a frame, which is called odometry here, and then you have your robot. Your robot uses encoders to get the odometry value. So you can always know where it is going. This is fine, right? If you start at point zero in the space and then you move to any other point, your encoders will tell you where the robot is going. So if you have a map and you know where your transformation frame is, which in this case is odometry, then as long as encoders give you values, you will know where the robot is. But there's a fundamental problem with this. Local localization methods like these, like odometry and IMU are prone to drift. What exactly do I mean by that? Let's say you have an encoder on your robot, which is a mobile robot, of course, and then you say your robot moved in X direction by one meter. 
maybe the wheels slipped but the encoder values will still say that the distance traversed in x direction is one meter but that is not the truth because your uh, wheel slipped now again this can accumulate over time because you will have slipping so this means that you are actually moving away from the ground truth value that's where global methods come into picture. That's why you also need map to odometry transform. So in this example, map transformation frame is actually your world frame. So whenever you have some drift, your odometry frame will actually move a little bit. And then this is corrected using global methods like let's say AMCL or GPS. Hence, you need this entire transformation chain, only odometry or only local methods are not enough. So again, Local methods like odometry and IMU, or even a fusion of that, for getting your transformation from odometry to base link. And then global methods like AMCL or GPS values to get your transformation from map to odom frame. So if you combine all of this, you actually get your localization in the map. So this was about localization. What about mapping? Well, that is simple. You need a map of the world to understand where your robot is right now and where you need to move. You can understand where your robot is moving that is based on localization only with respect to some blueprint, right? Even as humans, when we want to move from one point to the other, we need to know what the surroundings look like, right? Without that, it just makes no sense. Hence, mapping is used, of course. Now, if you don't have a map beforehand and your robot is seeing a place for the first time and it is also supposed to move here and there, so localize itself as well, then this problem statement is called simultaneous localization and mapping because you have none of these pieces but you still have to make sure that the robot moves this is beyond the scope of this video and series so we'll not talk about slam but if you have a map you can localize that's all you need to do in ROS2 you have a package called robot localization which is carbon filter based where you can actually localize your robot so you can give inputs for various sensors and then you can get the output for a refined odometry and then the second part is mapping. For mapping, you have different packages like Cartographer, you have Gmapping. So they can be used to generate a map. And for navigation, we have a framework called Navigation 2. It was called Navigation before. In ROS1, it was not a framework. It was basically a stack of different packages with the center at move base package, which would be the most intelligent part of this navigation system. In ROS2, things are a little more cohesive, or I should say a lot more cohesive. So you have this entire framework with a lot of packages inside it. So a lot of stuff which was spread here and there in ROS1 is actually a part of this framework itself. So this was a simple idea of what navigation is for a mobile robot. I know this video was pretty simple, but this establishes a base for us to talk in the upcoming videos because I did not want to start randomly with navigation package. It's a good idea to talk for a couple of minutes about what navigation is, what localization is, what mapping is, what dead reckoning is. And then we go from that to talking about what the difference is between navigation in ROS1 and ROS2. I will not go into the details of what navigation stack looks like in ROS1. Maybe I'll talk about it a little bit in the next video, but the next video will mainly be about us discussing what ROS2 navigation framework gives us. And from there, we will take it forward and then we'll start building stuff. So I'll see you in the next video. I hope this simple video was useful to start our series in navigation too. This should be super exciting and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.